This program raises questions. This program is for people who find it hard to trust God. The best answers are wrapped in flesh and blood. My friends, people who are enduring real tragedies every single day. Quadriplegia, muscular dystrophy, stroke, bankruptcy, loneliness, singleness. We're gonna to talk to those very people who have touched my life. Every parent likes to hear good school reports about his child, but what if the teacher says, your son can't be educated? Well, this is the remarkable story of how one of these children, Christian Royal, not only found a skill he loves to do, but one in which he excels far beyond what most people can achieve. Can those who are profoundly disabled learn? Watch and see. When Christian was born, um, I noticed when the doctor handed him to me that when he cried, his brow wrinkled up in a way that none of my other five children had um, had. This is this, this wrinkling together when he cried and I thought something was wrong. So I asked the doctor, is there something wrong with my baby? And she said, he may have Down syndrome. That was about all she said to me in the entire process. I wanted um, everyone to know that um, he would be a Christian and that he was favored of the Lord and he would be with us uh, uh, in eternity. So um, it occurred to me that he should be called uh, Joshua Christian. And, and so I, I told Helen that I felt that would be a good name for him, and she agreed. That pleases me mightily. That just is perfect. I love the name. When Christian was in school, it was the days when every child should learn to read, every child with Down syndrome is capable of and should be learning to read and count. We had, had uh, some good schools and some good teachers who really made uh, a valiant effort at trying to uh, help him learn everything he could. Um, but Christian does not get abstracts. Um, he still has trouble with words. He still does not understand what one and one um, means. But we kept trying and encouraging him at home and um, supplementing, and it still was not happening. The teachers were trying to teach him, but he could not keep up in the classes, and so he got moved into the trainable section, and, and that did not go well. Finally, they said that, oh, but we have school to work. Well, what is school to work? Please tell me. I'm so glad to know you have school to work. Well. If they go and fold pizza boxes at the local pizza parlor and wipe Tim tables for an hour and a half on Friday, they can have all the sodas and all the pizza they want. And I said, it's cool to work. But that's not making use of my child's hours and days and weeks and years. And so we decided to, to bring him home and uh, to work with him and, of course, to try and fill up uh, a day of activity for him when you don't have the typical uh, subjects to study. Um, we were searching for ideas. Down the street from us about two miles is a potter. And so um, Helen went and talked to him and asked if he would teach Christian. A potter who had never taught any child with any disability took Christian on. And the day that he said, Christian, place your tennis shoe in this clay on the floor, Christian fell in love with pottery. He saw the bottom of his tennis shoe impressed in this cool, wet clay, and he fell in love with pottery. They began building, um, making uh, mugs together and uh, with various types of impressions. And, uh, and Christian just uh, 
were just come alive. We were two years into pottery making, learning by trial and error and mostly error, stumbling our way through when I chanced upon a wonderful older couple who lived in the country in the upstate of South Carolina. I found them by simply going through a welcome station, looking at the brochures, picking up this brochure that had beautiful blue and green pottery on it, which are low country colors right where we live. I called up the number and said, I'm a stranger, I know it, but do you mind if I come and visit you at your home? Well, the neat thing about Helen calling me is that it was like I was a flower waiting to open up. And in her prompting me, the, the family experience of having a new great nephew, a new person in our family with special needs, uh, it, just, it just helped all of that open up, bloom. Yeah. Well, have you been making any pottery? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I hear you're getting famous. <laughs> you can't make enough. You, you sell more than you can make. And now, do you get paid for your signature now that you're so famous? Uh, well, I try. You try. <laughs> <laughs> Would you show me how to do that? Yeah. <laughs> Good. Well, hey, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> well, what do you say? Do you want to go to work? Let's go to work. Come on. Let's go down to the shop. <laughs> All right. Oh, golly. Christian, I can't believe it. Three years ago, your mom, your mom came to visit you. Meeting Jan and John Myers was absolutely providential. I have no doubt whatsoever in my mind. Um, the way they received us so graciously and um, also told us that on John's mind and heart for a very long time, handing over this process, a collaborative wheel and slab pottery making was on his mind to give to people with disabilities because he felt they could manage it far better, far easier than making pottery on a wheel. Look at that. Would you like to learn to make that bowl? Look at how similar this is here to this. See how that moves around? Oh, uh, it will round in the release. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And, uh, oh, where is this? See if these are uh, uh, here, uh, uh, bottom. Yeah, you got a bottom on it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. This is one piece of clay. This is two pieces of clay. One piece of clay that makes this, all of this here, but then another piece of clay goes on the bottom. Mm -hmm. I am almost certain you could do this. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Are we having fun? It was so different from what we had done. Um, everything up to that point we had done had been fairly heavy and John taught us a method that was much more sophisticated and actually was easier for Christian to do. So it was easier and it provided him with a more, uh, more sophisticated product, if you will. This is something Christian can do that will speed up the process of making pottery, make us more productive, and lends itself to tremendous imaginative uh, creativity, more so than work on the wheel alone. Look at that. This is the stamp of a dogwood flower. Now watch the way I stamp this. Not too hard. A lot of times we have to practice at least once or twice to see how soft the clay is. I press that plenty hard. See if you can do that. Oh. You can do it on there? Okay, get okay. yeah, yeah, a good stand. Got it? Not too hard. Oh, that's plenty hard. Okay, good job. Take it off. 
Okay, now what we're gonna do with that? This is just a uh, flat piece of clay. Let's make a plate. Okay, let's get behind you and get that form and we'll, we'll shape this into a plate. This form right over here. Oh boy, look at that. This is your new form. We're gonna take that plate and put it on top of this. I'll do it once and then you do it, okay? Put it on there like that. Uh, try. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right there. There you go. Can you do it? Do that. Show, show me you can do it. I know, this is what you do at home. Yeah. Turn it around some more. Good. Okay, did a little bit more. We gotta get that edge down there. Okay, we ready? Can you get it off of there? Uh, yeah. Okay, get it off, set it on the table. Okay. Uh, hey, you can pick it up. That's, that's the best way. Well. Wow. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh. <laughs> now, okay, yours and mine. Which one's the best one? Yours. Yours is good. There you go. I'm proud of you. <laughs> they just uh, adopted us, really. They adopted Mike and me and Christian. And when we would go up there, John would make it so much fun for Christian, who was extremely shy, that it was like going to good. camp. We just See, really that, enjoyed our time with them. Now it was like they were. Around. Uh, dear um, close relatives, yeah. in no time. Way to go. Uh, okay. I am convinced now, that this is an activity that my great nephew, as well as Christian, and people that have special needs or have special challenges, they can develop a skill that is appreciated, is needed in their community. And it's their work, their identity. You know? It's all like giving away the chocolate cake recipe if that's your business and, and all you do is the, the chocolate cake. That recipe is to be guarded, it should be guarded. They gave away the chocolate recipe with open hands and I'm stunned to this day that they would do that. Well, I think at this time in our lives, both John and I want to share what we have learned. You know, God gave us a lot of gifts. And uh, when we reach out with our creativity in, uh, in school, it, it supplies a different dimension to our whole, ourselves as a whole person and our, our learning experience. Oh, here's one of my new bowls funny with, with feet on it. As adults or people who have the possibility to teach, it's our responsibility to help other people have experiences that are in the rest of their lives are good memories uh, that help them achieve things that their imagination dreams up. What John gave us was really the opportunity, I think, to to really move us into uh, Christian having, really becoming a professional and, and having um, a business that would work for a lifetime. And Christian has succeeded. <laughs> In fact, Christian has developed a market for his work that I'm envious of. Seeing John and Jan's graciousness to us and sharing the chocolate cake recipe, giving it away to us, I thought about that verse so many times, freely you have received, therefore freely give. I feel that God gave us the opportunity to know Jan and John, and God wants us to give away the chocolate recipe that we have received. And we are happy to do it. We look forward to see how God is going to lead us in this endeavor.
Christian has other areas of his life that balance the pottery. He loves to play the drums, listens to worship music, knows most of the words of most of the songs. So he's, he's thrilled with that and also he beats all his brothers with Xbox. He's so good at it. He can play all those games and whip it. <laughs> oh, I'm on kill each other. I got you. Okay, Christian, how about another fat yeah. Christian gets so much inspiration from the beauty around him. And we talk about the various shrubs and uh, flowers and see which ones are appropriate to impress into clay. Good job. That's a beautiful one. And um, then we bring them inside the studio and flatten the stems and, and press them in. Start at the top, the way we're up. Mom, I would do it. Okay. Christian has become very, very independent in doing these things and many, many steps to making the pottery. Even though each step is doable after many repetitions of practice, yet there are many steps. But he's gotten to the point where he's almost completely independent of us in the studio. Likes our company, wants his praise music on, but wants us out of his way more and more. <laughs> Christian's full of surprises every day, and I just like seeing him light up uh, like he did today earlier when the Kim Fairy showed up. Oh! I get very happy when he gets so excited about the little things of life that mean so much to him. And, uh, and so I just want uh, those little things to show up each day. And uh, I'll be very happy for him. Oh, yeah. One of the major ways in which Christian was able to get into retail stores was due to a precious little gal with Down syndrome who is a cheerleader for her friends. Her name is Trista. And Trista was on the board of the Buddy Walk in Charleston, which is to raise awareness of Down syndrome. So she went to the board meeting, and uh, the lady who headed up the Buddy Walk board meeting said, does anyone here have any ideas for the Buddy Walk this year? Well, none of the adults said a word, but precious little Trista said, I do. Christian Royal gave me a mug for my birthday and it's beautiful and he makes beautiful pottery and I want him to sell his pottery at the Buddy Walk. And in a two or three weeks I received his phone call saying your son will be the first child to ever um, sell product or first adult even to sell product at the Buddy Walk and he is absolutely free to do it and to, to take all the money, all the profits thereof. Because of that um, pottery from that buddy walk by a customer ended up in the hands of the lady who owns Wonderworks, Christine Osborne. We found his art and his pottery particularly at a buddy walk in the community because toy stores are always involved in community events. And it was so phenomenal. Everybody was loving it. And I found out a Down syndrome child had made it. Christian was about 17 at the time. He was um, kind of labeled um, trainable, not educable, and actually he is 
way far above that in skill level. And what he offers in his art is almost brilliant, it's genius. When you look at the art, you cannot imagine putting the things he does together. From there, a lady came in to buy her granddaughter a toy for her birthday. And when she entered Wonderworks and saw Christian's pottery, she went to the store assistant and said, I must have this child's pottery in my store. I know this is bold of me, but I would like the name and the phone number of the mother of this child. I've got to have it in my store. Uh, we, Jeanette found him for us uh, from Wonderworks. She was in there, I think, shopping. Mm -hmm. And um, she said, you know, that, that would really be good. I just, it just feels right to me. Christian is very special to us, and it's because he's an artist. Uh, oh, I call it blue. In the blue months, oh, I call it that. Uh, uh, this. Uh, in the brown, green, and pink. Um, his work is beautiful. Yeah. It, um, technically, it is great but you can see the passion that he puts in it with his glazes and his designs, whether he's doing the lace impressions or he's doing leaf impressions or his little critters, which he loves doing. Um, his work could stand up to any potter. Now, what is really special about him is his story. So many people come in here and they're just blown away that this is this 19-year-old young man that's making this beautiful pottery and he has Down syndrome. And then they want a piece of it. I gotta take it home, I've got somebody in my family, I know somebody that has a disability. I wanna show them what their loved one can do. Christian, this is Miss Stephanie, right? Miss Debbie, hi, Ms. Debbie. nice and this meeting is, you. I'm from Boston. And I have, I, I'm gonna buy one of your, 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 your cross there and I am so proud of your business. He's tapped into what it really is to live, what it really is to make something for somebody. And then when he sees people purchase it and he sees the love that they have for the piece, it's just incredible to see that smile on his face and it's so genuine because he really gets it about life and what it's all about. And we're blessed to really be carrying his pieces and just, we're so excited for his success. Gorgeous Christian, I can't wait to get the other pieces. We're having a hard time keeping the pieces in stock, so we try to encourage him to take his time, but get us as many pieces as he can because it goes to a lot of people in the community and it shows a lot of love. He's starting to have people collect his pottery. They're saying they're collecting it because they feel there's a future in it for them. And um, also, people are wanting his signature. They want to sign his little autobiography. So he's just a super happy kid. He's so happy. Having an art, having something that he loves to do, where he's in his happy zone down in that studio, um, has caused him to have a confidence and a feeling of being able to exude joy and um, make conversation with other people, have a niche in this community, be proud of what he's done. And that has established such a confidence in him that relationships even outside of the pottery and the artistic world have become stronger and stronger. to have this hobby for Christian that has turned into a business because it gives him a future um, and it gives him a reason to want to get up every day. If I had taken the test and known that he had Down syndrome and had an abortion, not just the whole world that we live in, but our hearts and our lives would be so um, um, impoverished. 
from the joy that we've experienced by having Christian Royal. He is adorable, he's mischievous, he's funny, he's lovable, and um, very talented, we found out, with pottery. Can't read, can't count, but who cares? You know, that's not the be all and end all of life. If you find something that you love doing and you feel satisfaction and confidence and have found a niche in society, you have a teacup that is full no matter what the size. When I spend time with Christian, I think of 1 Corinthians 14, 12. It says, try to excel in gifts that build up the church. Well, this young man is excelling and doing it in a way that completely shatters the educational paradigm that labeled him in the first place. But isn't that just what God delights in doing? The Bible says that God loves to choose the weak things of this world to shame the strong. And when people like Christian buckle down and exercise their God-given gifts, boy, do they build up the rest of us, <laughs> reminding us all that we ought to be boasting in our weaknesses. People with disabilities do have gifts, and God delights in placing them center stage in His church so that His power might shine through their joy and simple yieldedness to the Savior. And Christian Royal teaches that lesson very well. <laughs>